We'll cover everything you need to know about this update, which I actually feel has more impact on the actual core of the game than the previous patch notes did, which is really surprising, again, given the title of this. There's some crossover. They are all falling under the category of quality of life, but there's so much more here. A lot of this is actually going to influence the inherent gameplay of builds and even different classes. It's long been a bugbear in the community that using a channel skill stopped all mana regeneration. In fact, this influenced a lot of builds or potentially made some builds unviable. However, in 1.1, most channeled skills which prevented mana regeneration while channeling have been changed. They no longer prevent base mana regeneration. However, the base mana regeneration amount has been added to their channel cost. Other modifiers to mana costs have been adjusted where necessary to also account for this change. This is pretty impactful. Along the lines of channeled skills, they start off with Disintegrate. Disintegrate has historically been highly dependent on an unintended interaction between two unique items, Ingvar's Head and Gambler's Fallacy. However, they've redesigned the skill so that it will inherently have more benefit from the skill tree, meaning you won't need those items to feel like they're required in order to play a Disintegrate build. It's going to open up a ton of options. It's also worth noting that the Gambler's Fallacy and Ingvar's Head will no longer work in combination, so keep that in mind when you're designing builds before the season begins. Now there's a number of skills that have been affected in this manner, so I imagine there's going to be a ton of different build potential, which is really exciting. Here we see Disintegrate has had its base damage increased, and it's also had its damage effectiveness increased as well by a pretty large amount. You see an example of the tooltip, and also some of the skill nodes within the tree have been revamped, as was mentioned previously, so lots of stuff going on here. Again, quality of life and more, but a ton of this is actually going to affect the characters that you may play. Shield Bash is yet another skill that's actually being essentially redesigned here. They felt like it was underutilized, so this is getting a total revamp. I'm actually kind of interested in trying Shield Bash on a Forge Guard. Seems like there could be some potential there, so might theorycraft a build here before the season gets started in just a handful of days. However, you can see all the notes here. Avalanche is another skill that's being changed in a fairly dramatic way. Avalanche is an awesome skill. I have a lot of fun with this skill myself when playing on a Shaman, so interested in seeing where this goes. Of course, you're going to get some more changes to this skill nodes and the skill itself. So overall, pretty much everything is positive. In fact, everything within this update that I've read has been in a positive direction. Now let's jump back up to the top and start at the beginning in the order that they intended. First is changes to blessings. All of these are really positive. I think there might still be a little bit of room for improvement here. However, everything that's being altered is definitely a positive or benefit to players. The first tidbit is you'll now find an NPC in the end of time next to the Monolith of Fate entrance. Similar to the passive respec, for a small gold fee, you will be able to swap between the blessings your character has earned. So you no longer have to just keep going through the Monolith until you re-roll the blessing that you're looking for. If you've previously unlocked it, so to speak, you'll now be able to swap back whenever you like. This is great for trying different builds. There's also an important note here that you'll be able to swap between the minimum rolled version of the blessing any character has earned on the same game mode. That means that if you've unlocked everything on say your main character, you can then take an alt and at least get the minimum roll blessing, provided it's been unlocked by that main character. You of course can see a look at the UI and there's been a little bit of feedback about this, mostly in regard to only being able to take a minimum roll on the alt. A lot of people are looking to just take the highest roll that they've unlocked on any of the characters on their account in that game mode. And that's up to you. Leave a comment on how you feel so we can share some more feedback with the devs. They're going with a number of improvements to the ladder, and this is just going to allow you to better track the players that are racing towards 100 at the start of a cycle. Also have timestamps included in there, and the same thing for the arena ladder. So really nice feature and quality of life updates for the players that are interested in these races. Continuing to fall under quality of life updates, we now have the ability to search within the monolith timeline for certain rewards. So if you're looking for, say, additional gold upon completion, you can quickly search for that, find a node with it, and then head in your direction. Some really nice loot filter improvements here, and the caption here is that if you have movement speed at tier 6 or higher, selected as one of the affixes that you would like, you can also then select a condition that they need to have tier 5 dexterity or something of that effect. So really nice, this will allow you to just fine tune things even further and make sure that everything that's showing on your display is something that you want to pick up. The best improvement here, in my opinion, is that you're actually going to get the ability to show Legendary Potential or Weaver's Will as one of the filter options. Legendary Potential being filtered is just absolutely amazing. You no longer have to scroll over items that you have zero interest in once you've played through the season for a really long time. Item faction changes, and the gist of this article is essentially they felt like players would reach a certain rank and the rewards would kind of be, hmm. So what they've done here is revamped everything, balanced it to a degree, so that this way when you hit a new rank, you kind of feel like, excited and happy to be there and the rewards are worthwhile and essentially balanced for the progression that you've made so far in the season. It does give you a little bit more detail as to what they've done specifically in order to make this occur, but the gist is that as you progress through your faction, you're just going to feel like you're getting rewarded for your efforts. 
Gaze of Orbis changes, and these are pretty straightforward. Essentially, you're going to get 12 corruption every time you defeat Orbis, and you'll be able to use up to four stacks, which means you'll get 48 corruption at maximum every time that you progress into a higher tier. More importantly, for anybody that plays with friends or in a group or just prefers party play, you can now gain corruption in a party. This means that when you go through, as long as you have enough stability when Orbis is defeated, you'll gain not only the blessing, but also a stack of that Orbis. There's some passive changes coming for Sorcerer, Forge Guard, and Shaman. Now they don't define these as actual class reworks, but there's some pretty big changes as well. Take a look at a few examples here. For the Sorcerer Archmage, you're not going to gain spell damage, chance to refund mana cost per point, and the values are going to be doubled if you have over 300 maximum mana, and values will be tripled if you have over 1,000 maximum mana. For the Forge Guard Shield Crafter, you'll now have a chance to cast a shield from Ring of Shields when you block a hit and you have additional block effectiveness per shield from Ring of Shields, and some of this synergizes with some of the other changes that have been made in this update as well. As for the node, the chance to cast shield on block is 10% per point, the block effectiveness per shield 20% per point, increased minion health, increased minion armor, both 40% per point. On Shaman, Swirling Maelstrom is really interesting to me. You can have a chance to cast Maelstrom when hit, which is always nice. That was popular in a lot of builds, but you're also going to now gain additional health and mana along with that. Four point bonus is also going to give you additional endurance threshold per Maelstrom. So all of these changes could actually alter some of the decisions you may make leading into the next season or cycle. So pretty interesting. Player War Decay is being changed, altered, nerfed, however you want to term this, but you can see the update. You're actually going to have the decay rate skyrocketing compared to old. This is just going to make ward builds less effective in an attempt to balance them. Ward was highly dominant in terms of being the best way to go to build your character for high corruption in the previous cycle. Overall, I think these changes are pretty amazing and feel free to leave some comments if you have them or like I said, suggestions or any kind of feedback you want to send to the devs as well. Hope you enjoy the cycle when it starts in just a number of days. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.